This week we are going to talk about health and wellness. We hope none of you get sick. But the common disease that peaks with the coming of autumn and winter is a cold. In this video, as the first video in the field of health, we want to talk about colds. In this section, we are going to talk about this disease and provide you with treatment and prevention methods. In the coming weeks, we will talk more about health. But if you like the video, be sure to support us by pressing the subscribe button and like the video. Also, we will be happy to hear your opinions and experiences in the comments. Information about what happens to the human body when we catch a cold. 1. Transmission. The common cold is primarily transmitted through respiratory droplets containing the cold virus. These droplets are expelled when an infected person coughs, sneezes or talks. They can be inhaled directly by another person or spread by touching surfaces contaminated with the virus and then touching the face, particularly the mouth, nose or eyes. 2. Viral attachment. When the cold virus enters the body, it attaches to specific receptors on the cells lining the respiratory tract, particularly in the nose and throat. Rhinoviruses, the most common cause of colds, bind to the intercellular adhesion molecule 1, ICAM-1, receptors on respiratory epithelial cells. 3. Incubation period. After the virus gains entry, it starts replicating rapidly within the respiratory cells. This initial stage is known as the incubation period, which typically lasts 1 to 3 days. During this time, the virus multiplies and spreads, leading to the onset of symptoms. 4. Inflammatory response. The immune system recognizes the presence of the cold virus and mounts an inflammatory response. This immune response involves the release of various chemical mediators, such as histamines, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and cytokines. Histamines. Histamines cause blood vessels to dilate, leading to increased blood flow and leakage of fluid into the surrounding tissues. This results in nasal congestion, stuffiness, and the characteristic runny nose. Prostaglandins and leukotrienes. Prostaglandins and leukotrienes contribute to the inflammatory response, causing redness, swelling, and irritation of the respiratory mucosa. Cytokines. Cytokines are chemical messengers that regulate the immune response. They attract immune cells to the site of infection, stimulate the production of mucus, and trigger fever response. Five. Symptoms. The combination of viral replication and the immune response leads to a range of cold symptoms. These may include nasal congestion, inflammation of the blood vessels in the nasal passages causes them to swell, leading to congestion and a stuffy or blocked nose. Rhinorrhea. The increased production of mucus triggered by the immune response leads to a runny nose. Sneezing. Sneezing helps expel the virus and mucus from the respiratory system. It is a reflex triggered by irritation of the nasal lining. Sore throat. The inflammatory response can cause discomfort, pain, or a scratchy sensation in the throat. Coughing. Coughing is the body's defense mechanism to clear mucus and irritants from the airways. It can be triggered by postnasal drip or throat irritation. Mild headache and body aches. Some individuals may experience mild headaches and body aches as a result of the immune response and generalized inflammation. Mild fever. The release of cytokines can stimulate the body's internal thermostat, resulting in a mild fever in some individuals. 6. Immune response. The immune system plays a vital role in combating the cold virus. Specialized immune cells such as lymphocytes, macrophages and natural killer cells are activated to target and eliminate the infected cells. Innate immune response. The innate immune response is the body's initial defense, providing a rapid, non-specific response to infections. Cells like macrophages and natural killer cells are activated to identify and destroy infected cells. Adaptive immune response. The adaptive immune response is specific and takes longer to develop. It involves B cells and T cells, which recognize viral antigens and produce antibodies to neutralize the virus and cellular immunity to eliminate infected cells. 7. Duration. The duration of a cold can vary, but most often symptoms peak within the first few days and begin to subside after about a week. Complete recovery, including the resolution of symptoms, typically takes approximately 7 to 10 days. However, some symptoms like coughing or mild fatigue may persist for a longer period. 8. Complications. In most cases, the common cold is a self-limiting illness 
and resolves without complications. However, in certain individuals, particularly those with weakened immune systems or underlying respiratory conditions, complications may arise. These can include sinusitis, inflammation of the sinuses, otitis media, middle ear infection, bronchitis, inflammation of the bronchial tubes, or rarely pneumonia. 9. Treatment. Currently, there is no cure for the common cold as it is caused by viral infections. Treatment primarily focuses on managing symptoms and promoting comfort. Rest. Getting plenty of rest helps the body conserve energy and direct resources towards fighting the infection. Hydration. Adequate fluid intake helps prevent dehydration and thins mucus, making it easier to expel. Over-the-counter medications. Over-the-counter medications such as decongestants, antihistamines and pain relievers can provide temporary relief from symptoms. These should be used according to package instructions or as directed by a healthcare professional. Saline nasal. Irrigation. Saline nasal sprays or rinses help alleviate nasal congestion and remove mucus from the nasal passages. Good hygiene practices. Practicing good hygiene such as regular hand washing, covering the mouth when coughing or sneezing, and avoiding close contact with others can help prevent the spread of the virus. Remember that while this information provides a detailed understanding of the common cold, individual experiences can vary. If symptoms worsen, persist longer than expected, or are accompanied by severe complications, it is advisable to seek medical attention for proper diagnosis and guidance. To help prevent catching a cold, here are some commonly recommended steps. 1. Wash your hands frequently. Properly washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds can help remove germs that you may have come into contact with. 2. Avoid close contact with sick individuals. Try to stay away from people who have cold symptoms, as colds can be spread through coughing, sneezing, or touching contaminated surfaces. 3. Practice respiratory hygiene. Cover your mouth and nose with a tissue or your elbow when coughing or sneezing. Dispose of used tissues properly and wash your hands afterward. 4. Avoid touching your face. Germs can enter your body through the eyes, nose or mouth, so try to refrain from touching your face with unwashed hands. 5. Maintain a healthy immune system. Eating a balanced diet. Getting regular exercise. Staying hydrated. Managing stress levels. And getting enough sleep can all support a strong immune system. 6. Clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces. Regularly clean and disinfect commonly touched surfaces and objects such as doorknobs, countertops, and electronic devices. 7. Consider getting vaccinated. While there is no vaccine specifically for the common cold, getting vaccinated against the flu can help protect your overall respiratory health. Remember that these measures can help reduce the risk of catching a cold, but they do not guarantee complete prevention. If you have specific health concerns or conditions, it's always best to consult with a healthcare professional for personalized advice.